And children of God, we come before you, Lord, thanking you for your goodness. Lord, we thank you for gathering us all here today, oh God. We thank you, Lord, that we have the opportunity to worship you in spirit and in truth. And so, Father, we ask, oh God, that you would open our hearts to hear. And, Lord God, that we might proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. We do love, honor, and adore you. And we ask it all in the precious and powerful name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And let all God's people say, Amen. 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 The title of my message this morning is Under the Influence. We are all influenced by something or someone. When we hear an idea, it can change the way we behave or think. When we're influenced by someone else, we begin to pick up on their thought patterns, and that can become a part of who we are and what we come to believe. A great example is that all of us, I would imagine, have been greatly influenced by our parents and siblings, if we have any. There are things we do and say, even in our adult lives, that stay with us because of their influence. Influences can have a great impact on our lives. They are all over, even on social media. They can influence us to buy a product or service. Therefore, we need to be careful who and what we allow to influence us. What we watch on television and who we follow can also have some influence on life issues. I was reminded of this when I had a conversation with the pest control man who came to the house. He was a young man and we were just making small talk. And he said something about having to work every other weekend. And he said it was hard to make plans and he then added that things are always happening on the weekends and he has to work. So I asked him if he was married. He said, no, but I have a girlfriend. And then he said, all in one breath, Dr. Phil said that we should not even bother to get married, that the divorce rate is so high. So I said to him, without thinking, don't listen to Dr. Phil. He does not know everything. Then he responded, so I shouldn't listen to Dr. Phil? Then I said, no, I didn't mean that. You can listen to whoever you want to. But I said, let me tell you who you should listen to. And then he was all ears. And I said, let me tell you about someone who knows more about marriage than Dr. Phil. <laughs> so I asked him, do you know Jesus? And he said, no, not really. And he acted like it was somebody that I, that I was talking about. Uh, but it, it was just kind of cute the way he did it. And so then I went on to tell him about Jesus. And I said, if you would listen to his word, then it could change the way you are thinking right now, or at least it can give you a different perspective. I said, he is the authority on marriage, so he knows the most about it. Then he said to me, but you just can't trust anyone. And all my friends feel this way too. So we talked about how untrue that is. And so the conversation went on for a while, I'm not gonna go through the entire conversation, but he was very attentive and so my is that people are being bombarded with influencers that shape the way they think and behave. He was of the impression, though, that it is okay to just keep having children because no young people are getting married these days. He says because that is what his friends are saying and Dr. Phil and whoever else is in his ear. And so I'm not saying that the divorce rate is not high, that people are not, uh, that all people are trustworthy. Because those are realities, but I'm just saying it is not the only reality I told him. And then I told him on a time that I know young people who are married and raising their families. And he gave me like a raised eyebrow, like, really? <laughs> then he said something like, well, I guess it is all the people that I hang around with in a very puzzled look. So he ended by saying, I guess I need to change my friends. And so I told him, not necessarily, but now you can be a positive influence on them because now at least you've heard from someone else on the subject. And of course, I did invite him to church. Hopefully what I said, though, had some influence on him. That's the point I'm making. Um, I know it's not just him, but many people are influenced by talk show hosts like Oprah and Dr. Phil. So I told him when he left, I said, just be careful who you listen to. And that is what the Apostle Paul was telling the church at Ephesus in the scriptures that we just read. 
He's telling them, be careful what you allow to fill you. Be careful what you allow to shape your life. He was speaking into the lives of the Ephesians so that they would not be unduly influenced by the culture that they were living in. In our lesson for today, the Apostle Paul is telling the audience to be filled with the Spirit, to be under the influence of the Holy Spirit. You see, the Holy Spirit is the third person of the Godhead, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Jesus sent back the Holy Spirit to lead and guide our lives, but he is often neglected in our everyday lives, and Paul was aware of that. So he went on to tell them because Ephesus was a city on the crossroads of the cultural superhighway of its day, and it drew people from all over. It was thought of as a suave and sophisticated city, and I can imagine maybe it was something even like New York City. And yet, because of its accessibility, it was a center for various cultural religious activities. And Paul felt, though, that because of some of its cosmopolitan traditions and common acceptance of some of the wildest competing mystery religions, that it might just put some new Christian believers at risk. So he wanted to help them to understand how not to be influenced by the culture. In other words, he felt that because they were living in a cultural melting pot, they might be led astray. So he wanted to tell them to be careful how they live. And so with that background, I want you to listen again to verses 15 through 18 of Ephesians 5. But they are the precursor to verses 18 to 21, which I really want to focus a little bit on this morning. He said to them, see then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. He was saying to them, be somewhat wary of your surroundings. Be unwilling to take risks. Be aware and wise in your choices. He said, redeeming the time, verse 16, because the days are evil. Make every opportunity then, Paul was expressing the sense of urgency here, not to get caught up in the evil of the day. He was saying to them, guard your time. Don't let yourselves be idle so that you are prone to hearing a lot of things that will not benefit you and will not help you to make wise decisions. Verse 17, he says, therefore do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Do not be foolish or unthinking, but as you are going about, keep in mind God's will. And then verse 18, he said, do not be drunk with wine in, in which is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit. You see, Paul was aware that as much as Ephesus was slick and elite, there was a God as Dionysus who had religious festivals and it is believed that by commentators that the equations of Paul's drunkenness uh, may stem from the common practice in many first century pagan cults, including this one, the cult of Dionysus, that they would have wine-induced parties as a part of their ritual celebration or worship gatherings. This also might remind you of the experience of being filled with the Spirit at Pentecost, I don't know if you recall in Acts chapter 2, uh, the Bible says that when they were gathered all uh, in one place and on one accord, that they were filled with the Spirit and they began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. But then those who were observing them first thought the people were drunk. And Peter had to remind them that it was only 9 o'clock in the morning that what, they, what was happening to them was not alcohol but it was the Holy Spirit. And so here again, Paul is contrasting these drunken, filled frenzies with the Christian experience of being filled with the Spirit and saying just like there are some outward manifest manifestations of drunkenness, there are likewise some outward manifestations of being filled with the Spirit. He did not want them to get mixed up between the two. And so he wanted to talk to them, though, about the Holy Spirit being the primary influencer of their lives. Being filled with the Spirit will alter your lifestyle and will be a permanent change as opposed to being drunk. Now you may wonder what Paul means by telling them to be filled with the Spirit. 
Because even as new believers, they have the indwelling Holy Spirit on the inside of them, just like you and I do uh, if we are believers. Uh, but and, and Nicodemus established that for us in John chapter 3 in his conversation with Jesus. But so I believe that what Paul was doing was making the point that we could have something even dwelling on the inside of us, and yet we can act as if we don't have it. And so remember years ago, we had an alarm system installed in our house. And we could set the alarm to go off when we were out of the house, but we could also set the alarm to be on when we went to bed. And we did not use it very often, but one night, we decided that we would try it because there was a stay-at-home feature uh, on the alarm system that we could turn on when we went to bed. So one night after our daughters went to bed, we activated it, and so we all went to bed. The house was nice and quiet. However, sometime in the middle of the night, we woke up to this piercing noise with lights flashing and a little girl screaming at the top of her lungs. Our youngest daughter, Sarah, who may have been five years or younger, got up in the middle of the night, somehow got turned around on her way to our room, and because she was tall enough for the sensors to spot her, it went off. None of us got any sleep, as you might imagine, for the rest of that night. And guess what? We never used that alarm system again in all of the many years that we lived in the house. We just left it completely alone. Now, we did not get the alarm uninstalled. It was still a part of our dwelling, but it was just there. Every day we came in, it said beep, 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 and we just walked right past it like it didn't even exist. It still had all the power that it was supposed to have, but we chose to live our lives without it. And that is how we sometimes treat the Holy Spirit. He has sealed us, and we know that he indwells, he dwells within us, but we don't communicate with him. We act like he doesn't even exist. And this is what Paul is saying to the Ephesians. Let's change this. Let's, the spirit that you have on the inside of you, let it fill you, let it overwhelm you, let it influence you. Welcome the Holy Spirit to fill us. Paul is talking to them not just for their individual personal experience as a prayer language, but in their worship experience and in their everyday lives. And so he goes on to say there will be some outward manifestations in our worship and in our thanksgiving and also in our interactions with each other when we are filled with the Spirit. So to be filled with the Spirit is to be under the influence of the Holy Spirit. He will indeed affect our reasoning, our thoughts, our attitudes, our ways. The Holy Spirit will help us to have joy in our worship and in our singing as we sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. The Ephesians sung the words of the psalms, which is the words of a lot of what we call praise songs in the faith we sing, a lot of the choruses. And even their hymn book was the psalms. They would sing spiritual songs just from the heart to express their love for God. You see, that is what the Holy Spirit does for us. He helps us to express our love for the Lord. He gives us power to live out the character of Christ in this world. Paul also says that to be filled with the Spirit will cause us to give thanks always in all situations. Not giving thanks for the situation, but giving thanks that God the Father and Son has sent the Holy Spirit to bring us joy. Joy is a part of the fruit that the Holy Spirit produces. Love, joy, and peace. That is what we need always, not just during Advent, but we, uh, we, we emphasize them during the Advent season. Because Advent reminds us that this is the season for the Holy Spirit to come alive in our lives. Just as the Holy Spirit visited Mary at a time when she could have been stoned to death, I think the Holy Spirit knew what he was doing. She was under the influence of the Holy Spirit, and that's what caused her to say yes. That's what caused her to be filled with joy as she sang, My soul 
doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. That is what the Holy Spirit wants to produce in each one of us. Joy unspeakable, peace that surpasses all understanding, and love that is everlasting. You see, we don't have to worry when we are under the influence of the Holy Spirit. You do know that when people drive under the influence of alcohol, they can even go to jail. But we never have to worry about being uh, having too much of the Holy Spirit uh, in our lives. We cannot hide it because just like being drunk, people will be able to see the joy, the love, and the peace because it will ooze out of us. And you will always be an influence upon others. You see, this is the reason for the Holy Spirit to fill us. This is the reason for us to see the possibilities of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit filled Mary's womb with Jesus, and the Holy Spirit wants to fill each one of us with Christ-like fruit. So let us invite the Holy Spirit to fill us this morning so, we'll be, so that we will live under the influence of the power of Almighty God. Like the songwriter said that we just sang, we can ask the spirit of the living God to fall afresh upon us, to mold us, to melt us, to use us, and yes, to fill us. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh upon us. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh upon us so that we might have the joy that we need to have as we sing the songs of John Zion, so that we might have the peace to go through this season. And so anything that is oppressing us, we can ask the Holy Spirit to come and to fill that place in our lives so that we can receive him with joy unspeakable. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal God, we thank you for the joy of the Holy Spirit that you give unto us. Lord, we thank you for the peace that you give us, oh God, not just in this season, but Lord, as we think about all that this season uh, represents, Lord, we want to be uh, carriers of your spirit. Lord, like Mary was, we want to produce Christ-like character in our lives. And so, Father, we do praise you this day. We love you. We honor you. We adore you, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. And, Lord, I pray if there's anyone in the sound of my voice, O yes. oh God, that does not know you in the part of their sins, that even in this moment, they would ask you to come into their hearts to live on the inside of them, to fill them, that they might be under your influence. Oh, Father, we thank you, we praise you, we love, honor, and adore you. We ask all of these things in the precious and powerful name of the Lord Jesus Christ and of all God's people say, Amen. Amen. Amen.